Good afternoon. I'm Jonathan. I uh, work on Perl 6. And um, I want to talk today about how the hell do you debug a Perl 6 program when it doesn't work. So let's take an example. I'm writing a module, a really simple one, that issues polls. So we're going to be able to vote for stuff. OK, we give a bunch of options. We vote on them. And then we can get a result graph just renders as ASCII. So I start hacking away. OK, so we write a class. It's got a couple of attributes up there. It's got the options. It's got the scores. In the build sub method, we set all the scores to 0. When you vote, if the option is valid, we increment the, the score for that option. And then, of course, I like my modules. So I'm going to have another module for rendering the bar graph. That's text bar graph. It's very short. It looks like this, OK? So here we have render graph. It takes the data. We can limit how many characters wide the label is, how many characters wide the graph is going to be. And then we sort of calculate the width of the label. We figure out the maximum value. And we do the sort of the boring thing of sort of plotting out the bar graph. So here we go. This is use poll simple. We are doing a poll of our favorite types of beer, OK? So we are, do we prefer stout or lager or porter or whatever? And what I expect is when I make a new poll, then I render the graph, the result graph, and I should just get an empty graph. And when I run the program, divide by 0. Oh, noes. So someone comes and says, use the debugger. But there is no Perl 6 debugger. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, no. oh yes, there is. Oh, yes, there is. Yeah. Really? It's, it's, it's behind? Oh, so it is. OK, so we do Perl 6 dash debug. OK. And what it does is it tells me that it's loaded these three modules up here. And it puts me here, um, highlighting in yellow the line of code that we're about to execute. And I can just step my way through. So here we are in this build sub method, which is just going to zero all the scores. OK. And we can just sort of work our way through the program. Now, my sort of concern is that it crashes somewhere. And I'm curious what's going on. So I just hit run. And what it does is it comes and it goes through and it says, oh, this is the line of code where things went wrong. And I can see a division in there. So if I say dollar, oops, how do I type and hold the mic? <laughs> OK, so we can see it was 0. OK, so fine, yeah, this is a problem. So let's try this again. But this time, I'd like to get a little bit closer to the problem. So what I'll do is I'll add a breakpoint. OK, I'm going to put the breakpoint in that bar graph module. Where? Well, I figure it should be somewhere around line 5. OK, and then we just run this. And it takes me to here. And what I can do is I can, I can just sort of go through and sort of say, ah, there we've just calculated max value. It's 0. Why is it 0? And I can start evaluating bits of the program. So I can look at the data, and then I can look at the values. OK. I should have hired a human mic stand or something. OK, and we can see they're all 0. And then just to sort of try, I mean, we know the solution would be to, to sort of, oh, this is brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, we know the solution would have been, <laughs> there's a module for everything. Um, OK. To, to just do this instead. So if we're sure that that's the solution, what we can do is we can actually just go and assign the value straight there in the debugger and continue testing our program. OK? And now we can see that it gets through. It sort of does the right thing. We've made some progress. So what else can you debug with this? Well, what about if we have a regular expression? OK? So here I have something that is going to try and match the string abc123 against this regex. When I start stepping through this regex, it realizes we're in a regex, and it puts up the text there. And you can see that backslash w plus. And when I hit enter, it swallows the whole thing. And it now wants to match the c. And it can't. It actually has to backtrack. And we can trace all the way through this until it hits the c. OK, then it wants the backslash d plus. It swallows all the digits. Needs the free, OK, it backs one off, 
and there we go, it, it matched. What else can we do? Well, it's aware of begin time, okay? So what happens at begin time? Well, macros run at begin time. So here, no, where? There, um, I have a macro. This is a bug macro. It just doesn't output a line of code. Um, sorry, it doesn't run or even include that line of code in the program if the bug is set to false. But it's set to true at the moment, so let's run through it. Okay, here we go. We see that we're in the macro. Remember, we're at compile time. The compiler is still running, okay? This is when macros run. So we actually put these lines in. There we go. We step through. We do all the things. If we go and turn this into false and save that, what'll happen? We go through, okay, nil, again, nil. And notice how it doesn't even try to run those lines of code. So we can see the effect that our macro had. So it knows begin time. You can debug inside of evals. It's pretty awesome. And we'll bundle it in the next Rukudo Star release. Thank you very much. Yeah.